the internet has made it really easy for um, offenders to access children. You know, police officers 20 years ago would be trained to look for suspicious people in the parks who were hanging out where kids were hanging out but didn't have any kids of their own. Uh, now offenders can sit at home in the privacy of their house and they can contact hundreds of kids a day without anyone even seeing their face or knowing exactly what they're doing. There are two types of groups who are most at risk for being exploited on the internet. Um, the first group is children who are new to the internet. And those types of youth are more likely to accept friend requests from strangers or people that they don't know. Um, that makes them a very easy target. Social network sites such as uh, MySpace and Facebook has made this uh, exploitation offenses generally uh, far more prevalent. Computers and social media has made that um, essentially a window into your home. Uh, the internet is used in the sex trafficking of minors because of websites like Craigslist. Um, and other websites that allow people to post um, uh, ads uh, in, in, in classifieds, letting people know that there are people available you know, for, for sexual exploitation. But what they don't tell the reader is that, that the female is actually 13 or 14 years old. So the uh, invention of the internet has really made law enforcement's job difficult, and it's made offender's job very easy when it comes to contacting children online. San Diego Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force is a multi-jurisdictional team. The number one purpose of the San Diego Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force is the safety of children who access the internet. Our second uh, goal in the task force is to arrest uh, people who offend against children online. It's very difficult to prosecute as a prosecutor. These individuals pick on the most vulnerable people of our society, our children. They need to be held accountable for what their actions uh, due to the children themselves, the families, and the communities in which we reside. Demand requires or supports um, younger and younger children being um, involved in this. I would say the most difficult part of my job is, um, is talking to children who have been victimized. There's a child who's been abused uh, who's going to be scarred for the rest of their life. On one level would be the physical damage. Broken bones, scars, bruising. I've had one girl who was forced to get um, an abortion and as a result um, likely un unlikely to have children in the future because of the numerous beatings and the forced abortion that she had. On a, another level, the more long-lasting perhaps after wounds have healed is the mental damage and that is the feeling of uh, low self-esteem, lack of self-worth, feeling that you know that they're nothing, that they're dirt and it's a huge obstacle for them to be able to move forward from the offense. The most important thing that can be done when it comes to protecting youth from child exploitation on the internet uh, is education and parent involvement. Know where your kids are. Know who your kids are hanging out with. And I'm not just talking about in person, I'm talking about online, through various social media. If a child is educated, uh, they're taught um, do's and don'ts of the internet, um, they're more likely to make good decisions while they're online. And a lot of kids get in trouble simply because they're making bad decisions online. If something happens to you on, when you're online that you're not comfortable with, you need to report it. You need to tell somebody about it so we can get it to stop and so that it doesn't happen to another youth who goes online.